We'll start off talking about motion. Motion is obviously very important. We live in a world in which things move. Airplanes move through the air. We move around on the surface of the earth if we drive around or walk around. Animals move around. In fact, the word animal is related linguistically to the word animate. So something that is an animal is literally something that is animated, something that moves, as opposed to a plant which is stuck in the ground and doesn't move around. So motion is obviously a big part of our lives and our world. So understanding motion and explaining it correctly is an important thing. A good understanding of motion, a correct physical explanation of motion, is actually a relatively recent development historically. If you go back to ancient Greece a couple of thousand years ago, some of the first people to try to seriously think through and explain the physical world were the ancient Greek philosophers and mathematicians. And these guys were brilliant thinkers and they got a lot of things right, but they also got a lot of things wrong. And specifically their understanding of physics, their explanation of the physical world, and in particular also their explanation of motion, was completely wrong. So we're going to take a, a look historically at some of the incorrect ideas that these guys came up with, and we'll contrast that with the correct understanding of motion that we have today. First, we'll look at a couple of ancient Greek thinkers that got some things right. This is Archimedes. Archimedes lived a couple of hundred BC, in the second century BC, and he did several significant things. He explained buoyancy, that is why things float, why some things sink and some things float. He explained levers and pulleys. These are, these are what we call simple machines. And in particular, these two things, levers and pulleys, allow us to increase the force which we exert on something. And he was able to use these things in a, in a very significant way. He was from the town of Syracuse, and when the Roman army was attacking Syracuse, he, he was able to build these devices which would help defend the city from the Roman attackers. They were sailing boats. Syracuse was a coastal town with the, the wall that went right up to the sea, and the Romans were attacking and sailing ships right up to the wall of the city. And Archimedes would send his device over the wall, which was a, a mechanism controlled by, uh, by ropes and levers and pulleys. And it would hook on to one end of the ship and lift it up out of the water and then drop it in end first. And the ship would take on enough water that it would capsize and sink. And the attacking armies thought this was magic. They had no idea that, that just a few people could exert enough force to lift a ship out of the water. They couldn't conceive of that. But Archimedes was able to do it using these simple machines, levers and pulleys. Archimedes was also one of the greatest mathematicians that ever lived, and he came up with some pretty advanced mathematical theories. So I'll write advanced mathematical ideas, and you can write those things down in the blank space in your notes. Uh, he was without question the greatest mathematician of the ancient world, and one of the greatest mathematicians of all time. Here's a picture of Thales, that's T-H-A-L-E-S, and it's Thales, not Thales. Thales was very old. He was actually, he actually predates the Greeks. He lived in that general area, but this was even before Greece was known as a Greek nation. He was a very ancient um, philosopher, and he was the first to do early experiments with static electricity. And he also became pretty famous for accurately predicting an eclipse. So those are a couple of examples of some ancient thinkers that understood some things about the physical world correctly. But there were some things that some thinkers got wrong. Now here's a picture of Aristotle. This is a picture from a painting from the Middle Ages, uh, much later. Aristotle lived in the 300s BC, and he is, without question, one of the most significant thinkers in the ancient world. In fact, there's some other names you might have heard of. Socrates. 
Socrates, a famous philosopher, Socrates was the teacher of Plato, and Plato was the teacher of Aristotle. And Aristotle established an important school. It's called the Lyceum. And, um, and as far as physics goes, as far as his understanding of the physical world, he had some incorrect ideas. And this ends up being very significant. Incorrect ideas on motion, astronomy, and physics. In physics, in particular, his understanding of forces was incorrect. These are all very important topics as far as understanding the world. Uh, now don't get the wrong idea. Aristotle was a brilliant philosopher and his ideas have endured. In fact, you can go into a bookstore. You can go into Barnes & Noble or, or Borders Bookstore or get on Amazon or something right now and find books that he wrote that people still buy and read today. And it, Think about how significant that is. This is over 2,000 years ago this guy wrote things down and people are still talking about it. People are still reading his ideas and studying them and talking about it. And he got a lot of ideas right. In particular, his ideas about logic. He explained the logical thought process that goes on in a person's mind and, and just got it exactly right. And it's a tremendously important idea. But his ideas on physics were wrong. And that's what's important for this course because this course is about physical science and the physical world. And his ideas about physics were wrong.